The Adventurer's Log, 1.1112.20. Hi, I'm Bobby, I'm your host, and today we're going to be talking about Star Trek Discovery. But, before we get to that, let's get into this day in tech history. We actually have two stories. First one is, on November 12th, 1990, Tim Berners-Lee submits a proposal for a hypertext project he calls the World Wide Web. In this proposal, he lays out his vision of what will, of course, become the modern-day web in about three months. He will have a web browser ready, and in only another three months, the first, first web server will go online, marking the launch of the World Wide Web. And then, our second story for today is... <coughs> excuse me. On November 12, 2000, Bill Gates demonstrates a functional prototype of a tablet PC. Microsoft claims the tablet PC will represent the next major evolution in PC design and functionality. However, the tablet PC initiative never really takes off, and it isn't until Apple introduces the iPad in 2010 that tablet computing is widely adopted. Microsoft's failure with the tablet PC initiative was threefold. First, they simply tried to adapt Windows, an operating system designed for use with a keyboard and a mouse for use with a touchscreen and pen interface. Users never really warmed up to the awkward hybrid interface. Second, by their own words, they were incorporating the, the convenient and intuitive aspects of pencil and paper into the PC experience. Rather than innovating, it appears, to, it appears that Microsoft was moving backwards by trying to graft an old paradigm, pencil and paper, onto a computer. It's one thing to create an app or peripheral that mimics pencil and paper. It's another to base an entire technology initiative around it. Finally, Microsoft left the design of the hardware to the OEM partners, most of whom are not especially well known for innovating designs. Most tablet PCs were considered too big, heavy, and expensive. Plus, the required pen stylus was prone to loss. All of these factors left many tablet PCs collecting dust, if they were sold at all. All right, so let's get into Star Trek Discovery. Um, spoilers are ahead, so if you've not watched it, Stop now. Pause now, go watch it, then come back and you can see what we talk about. Um, so, Star Trek Discovery, Season 3, Episode 5, called Die Trying. So, last time we saw the crew, they had just learned of the location of um, Starfleet Headquarters. And so, they're on their way. And the, the, the crew is prepped, and they're, they're ready to go. Um, and when they show up to the location, they just see this giant bubble. And the crew are like, uh, is that right? And Saru goes, they know we're coming. It's a security bubble. Go ahead. And so they pierce the bubble and pop inside. And it is the first time that we see, fully see, Federation starships from this timeline the 38th century or whatever it is 37th century or whatever um <clears throat> and the there's so many ships that that we see um i would put up pictures but i don't have any because the show is new today um <clears throat> one of the ships we see is um voyager in a sense, um, it is the Voyager dash J, you know, the tenth version of the crew. Um, we also see another const constellation cruiser. Um, they see another scout ship, um, and we also, in the corner of the screen, we saw the USS Nog. If you've seen Star Trek DS Nine, then you'll recognize that name. He is the first, at least on screen T 
TV series wise, he's the first Ferengi to join Starfleet and also the very first Ferengi captain. So little tiebacks to each series so far. I, I love when they do that. Um, then when um, Saru, um, Burnham, and Adira, tall, um, sorry, I keep saying um, when Saru, Burnham, and Adira Tall beam down to the Federation headquarters, we see just just in in the in the front four section of the screen. It's very quick. We see the name Kazon, and again, that's another reference to Star Trek Voyager. So I love all these references to different series that we keep seeing. It, it's just so cool. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is that the Admiral makes a, a, a mention of makes a mention of the fact that he's not seen a Kelpian in so long. And Saru goes, wait, my people are still here? They're, they're part of the Federation? And the Admiral goes, yes, they are part of the, Fe Kaminar has joined the Federation. We've not talked to them in, in quite some time because they are on the very edge of, of our reach zone within, you know, whatever the distance is. And we also see new aliens left and right. Uh, there are three that are in their sick bay being treated for something, which that's what the, the, the story centers around today. <clears throat> so with the crew coming, or with Discovery coming in to the fold, the Admiral debriefs every single one of them and does like a scan of the ship and has intentions of breaking up the crew and reassigning them and bringing in new crew to to pilot discovery and saru and burnham especially burnham are like no 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 we're a family we have our ways we have you know we've learned who each other are we, we can't and the admiral goes i don't care you're not home yet you still have to follow my orders so as the crew and Burnham and Saru and everybody's being debriefed, we see a bunch of holograms. So it's, it's, a, it's numerous amounts of holograms that are actually debriefing them. And we see a hologram doctor. Um, not, not Robert Picardo's doctor from Voyager, but just a hologram doctor. It's very unique because they have... Uh, how do I put it? They have very, not robotic, but alternated voices. So um, they they just sound a little off, almost like they're talking through a tin can, but a digitized tin can, if that makes sense. Um, so Saru asks how many how many people or how many planets species are in the, the Federation. And the Admiral says 350 member worlds of the Federation down to 38 that we are aware of. Um, we can tell that the Admiral still has deep hesitation over whether or not Saru and Burnham are telling the truth and whether or not they are from the past and not some sort of, of uh, temporal Cold War initiative people trying to change the future. Um, so that's, we, we see that reference again from Enterprise. So that there's several little loose ends that are being tied up very slowly, but being tied up uh, through this series. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. There's, there's a point where uh, Saru says, you know, that there's there's a disagreement 
on the, the headquarters. They go back to the ship. Saru and Burnham are talking, and Burnham is like, "Well, we just need to get a get a hold of the alien crew's manifest and figure out where they went." Da 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 da. And Saru goes, "Get a hold of." Michael goes, "Well, yeah, we, we need to to look at it so we can help." And Saru says. I thought you learned your lesson about breaking rules and following orders. Which is a reference to first and second season of Discovery. Specifically the first season. And possibly earlier in this season. But still, specifically the first season. Um, so w- there's going to be some contention between them from time to time. Because Saru has gotten back into the Starfleet mentality. And Burnham is still in her... Lone Ranger, solo fighter kind of person mentality. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Detmer is doing better, but obviously had an issue after the spore jump drive to where their mission took them. Um, what their mission was is they were they were looking for a seed bank ship of the Federation that has uncontaminated, untainted seeds from this planet that these aliens that were in the sick bay had gone to. So there was there's some connection to the past about that planet if Certain things weren't done to fix their health. Um, so, something along the lines of, in the past, that planet had a lot of industrialization and looking and, you know, all of that. And because of that, the atmosphere was polluted. And because of that, everything is still contaminated to this day. And the aliens went to that planet scavenging for food, parts, whatever. And with that, they ate contaminated food or fauna or whatever from that planet. That's why they're slowly dying. So so the mission is to go find the seed ship, get the untainted seeds fauna flora whatever um and bring it back and make a a cure and they'll basically redeem themselves in the federation's eyes and they'll be welcome back home um and so with that they had to jump to where the last location last coordinate known coordinates of the seed ship so up until this point detmer has been doing better after this the spore jump we can tell she's having issues. And then there was um, some sort of ion storm anomaly that caused the ship to be hit by some sort of waves of light or something. I don't Not all. Big on that mumble jump. Not, <clears throat> not big on all the science talk. But we can tell that Detmer is still having issues. And the Admiral actually mentions later in the episode that, you know, your crew are all suffering from loss and and they feel lost. And especially your, your pilot, Lieutenant Detmer. Uh, she, her baseline, you know, mental baseline is not where it should be. So that's like the first time that we see somebody of true authority mentioning anything. So I I like that they're slowly getting to it. I wish they'd get to it a little faster, but eh. Um, During all the interrogations, we see Philippa Giorgio in a room with two holograms and a guy over here wearing glasses And Giorgio keeps asking, well, who's he? And the holograms say, "Uh, look at us. And so she blinks at him a lot and the holograms disappear. 
some fancy trick she knows. I don't know. Not important. So the guy with the glasses sits down. Um, the gentleman with the glasses is, I might be wrong on saying this with name, but I didn't type it, I didn't write it down. David Cronenberg. I'm pretty sure that is a reference to the Cronenberg movies and all of that, but that's him. Uh, so this is one of the most unique cameos that we see, but we don't understand why he's there. There, you know, yeah, he's debriefing her, but he's honestly trying to find out more, not necessarily about her, but the crew of the ship. And so their their conversation, and he basically one-ups Giorgio and can tell there's something going on there. Not, you know, not romantically, but something behind the scenes going on with him. Um, I really hope we see him again. And with with their interaction in, later in the episode, right there towards the end, we see Burnham walk, rock, walking along in a corridor and sees Giorgio and so starts talking to Giorgio and she just doesn't respond. She's in a very catatonic, unresponsive state, just standing there. And Michael goes, Giorgio? Philippa? Philippa. And then Philippa jumps out of it and goes, what? And like nothing happened. So I think there's going to be a connection to the guy with the glasses. I think his name was Vance or I don't. They never really said his name, but I think there's a connection there. I don't know if she's mentally in a prison and he's in control of her mental capacities and the the person on the ship is just basically a shell being controlled by him i I, we shall see about that um one of the unique things during the inter interrogation is he's got his little badge you know the the delta badge uh, and with that, he takes it off, and the hologram that he's working on, you know, the interface he's working on, goes away. So at least with him, maybe not all the others, but at least with him, the holograms are built into his badge. And instead of it being readily available for anybody, it's more of a personal computer. So I wonder if that is common tech, or if that's just his tech so we'll see about that so <clears throat> on the mission they're, they're on there's a point where burnham and colber colver and non um go onto the seed ship because the operators of the seed ship change every so many years and the operators of the seed ship right now are benzonites i think that's what it was anyways the species that non is and if you remember she came from the enterprise back in the past and she took she stayed on Discovery after Arium, the character who looked like an android, uh, was taken over by control and non-killed Arium and all that jazz. So she decided to stay with Discovery in memoriam to Arium. So she, Colber, and Burnham are on the ship, and they, you know, they're walking around, and they realize. The seed vault has been opened, and there's a bunch of holo- there's one set of holograms going, and we we see more of her species sitting there talking, playing, reading, da 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 da, da through a hologram, and a lullaby is sang, and it's the exact same lullaby that Burnham heard from 
Adir Atal, who learned it from Sinatal or one of the others. Another connection there that we're going to have to figure out. So they figure out certain people are dead. There's only one of the, the other operators of the seed ship still alive. And he's trying to find a cure for his family, even though they're dead. And Culver says to Burnham, says, you've got to talk to him. Non can't talk to him about this because this is this is in her this isn't in her wheelhouse she can't handle this if it was any other species she could but it's too close to home for her you need to handle this so burnham walks over and basically says dude your family is dead we have the ability to save another species save someone else's family we need your help. And so he, break, he breaks out of his catatonicness and opens up the seed vault. And Nan goes in and types in and gets the seeds. And they went... <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, and Nan decides after... After... Um, after they get the seeds, Nan decides to stay on the ship because that's what she needs to do because it is her race that is operating the ship and she's the only one that's going to survive. So she decides to leave. And this just adds to the fact that, because she, she's talking to Burnham, this just adds to the fact that Burnham is more accepting of her emotions and her humanity again. And the last year has definitely changed her for the better. And I hope we find out more what of what happened this last year. But it's interesting because there's a line that is said, sometimes there isn't a good choice, only what you can live with. Um, and that's why Nan stays and the ship discovery goes and they go save that other species and the Federation formally accepts them into the to the fold. And with that, they're going to um, be like the rapid response team or whatever, which I saw a trailer for the next episode. That's where that topic comes in. Um, but the interesting thing is Burnham had contacted one of the other people there at the Federation headquarters and asked about that lullaby. And the person she talked to says, I, I recognize the song, but I don't know it fully, don't know where it comes from. And apparently numerous people there on the station also recognize it, but don't know its or origins. So it's going to be a big part. Maybe that has some sort of reference to the burn i i don't know because they don't have full theories on what caused the burn they have a bunch of them they have like seven i don't know they have numerous theories um but they have no concrete evidence on what actually caused the burn so that's going to be an aspect that we're going to see the rest of the season um <clears throat> and then Right there at the end, as as the camera pans away from Discovery there next to the Federation headquarters, we hear the traditional Starfleet theme. Basically, what you'd hear whenever in the Star Trek movies when they go into one of the big star bases or the opening, basically the traditional Star Trek theme. And it's the first time that we've heard it, at least this season, if not all the other seasons. So I found that very unique. There's a lot that's going on, a lot we don't know yet, and a lot that I hope we find out pretty soon. So that's all I have today. 
good episode. Check it out. Not as fast as the other episodes. Not as, you know, exciting. But it definitely sets up for the rest of the season. And I, I want to see the rest of the ships they have there. Because... I, you know, I, I play the Star Trek Online game, and there's so many numerous options for, for ships. I just wonder how many of those ships are going to carry over from the TV series to the game. So, <clears throat> we shall see. All right. Take a chance and explore something new or old, but new to you. Adventure is out there. Go find it. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.